Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, the more things change, the more they they stay the same, <laughs> I guess. Disney has announced that it has hired a new chief diversity officer. So if you guys remember a couple of months ago, they had, I think it was Latondra Newton, I think that mm -hmm. was her name. And she had a horse of a different color. Uh, yeah, that was the one that, that Bob Iger apparently made. Uh, <laughs> made really, that joke about her. Made a, a pretty off-color remark about. And uh, anyway, uh, she got gone. And after she got gone, it seemed like everybody started throwing their uh, chief diversity officers overboard. And it was like boom, 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 boom. Because, you know, again, the money's running out. So when the money runs out, they're looking at this like this is a non-essential. But really, they might be looking at this like... These people are actually costing us money because they're getting their fingers into the production side of things and they're dictating the the makeup of the writer's room and they're dictating the makeup of the shows that get greenlit and the you know pushing for all this diversity and inclusion in the theme parks and all stuff and it's actually costing us money, right? So we thought Disney's tossing their diversity officer overboard and that was that was gonna be it. But nope, they hired another one. But but if you read between the lines, it sounds like her role is being limited to HR. Which is what it should be limited Which is, to. I, I, I agree they need to have somebody there that maybe understands people's different backgrounds, whatever, but it needs to, that needs to be limited to HR. Not, this person is involved in our productions, this person's mm -hmm. gonna come in and make sure we have the right, uh, you know, check boxes on our shows and the ratio, whatever. So I think her, I think her role personally I think is going to be diminished over what the previous diversity officers was. Plus, she was under Bob Iger, and Iger was letting people have more power and over that kind of stuff than right, they probably right. should have had. Right. So we'll, we'll talk about this, and then we're going to talk about that. Pete Docter talking about Disney doubling down on stories that speak to different kinds of people, uh -huh. among other things. Because uh, apparently Elemental... Uh, it made some money at the box office, surprisingly, but, uh, you know, I, apparently it's a Disney plus hit. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I have no interest in, in watching it. It's just another, just another Pixar thing dumped on the Disney plus. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get a woohoo. If you do, woohoo. uh, go out to shopclownfish.com. You can pre-order shadow binders volume three. It's going to be shipping next year. It's the first new shadow binders graphic novel content in like 10 years mm -hmm. so uh we're excited to get back to that um you got about a month yet you can go back it go back it uh so this is uh tanisha agramonte am i saying that right i, I don't know right. she is the new chief diversity officer at disney and uh, latondra newton got gone um, yeah, like, oh, they left. You know, they, they, the middle of the night without a message to anyone? Yeah. Yeah, um, that was weird. That's how it was done. It was just like, yeah, she's gone, everybody. She's just gone. Unless they made her really mad and she left because of that. And just that like, I'm been. done. I don't know. But I just think, I'm not surprised. I figured Disney would hire somebody else. I'm surprised it took them this long. But everybody's like, oh, look, Disney's turning against the woke. And it's like, I think they know they have to walk it back a little bit because they're getting, they were getting too political. But I also know that how Disney is, and it's still under Bob Iger, so it's always going to be political to one side. It's always going to be, but at least as long as the leadership is where they're at. So, of course, they went and brought another, you know, di you know diversity and inclusion officer. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about this, though, is it does, and I, I read through this, it sounds to me, and this has happened at other companies, too, where they have a diversity and inclusion officer, but they make it part of HR. It's not, I think LaTondra Newton had input into what was being produced. I think she, cause when she came on, that was about the time they started making all the changes in the parks. And, you know, you started to see like, Oh, we're not going to green light shows unless they have, you know, they have to be less than 50% white or whatever. And that, that whole thing, I think that probably, probably, probably came from her. This, this lady sounds like she's basically working underneath the human resources officer. And this will be part of, that's what resources. it sounds like, yes. Uh, yeah, she said she's been at Disney for a year, working as a vice president of diversity, equity, and inclusion, talent outreach, and development within the Disney parks, experiences, and products. In this new role, she will report to Sonia Coleman, senior executive vice president and chief human resources officer. And you look at the statement, and it's all about their employees. It doesn't talk about productions. Mm -mm. Said among each of our uh, teams and in every community where we live and work around the world, Disney is committed to building a more inclusive and respectful world. Again, our teams 
and communities where we live and work. Uh, Tanisha Agramonte, again, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is an uh, integral member of our executive leadership and a dedicated, well-respected leader within Disney as our new CDO. Her expansive knowledge and expertise, having worked in a variety of industries, will allow us to continue creating a welcoming environment for our employees globally. This does not sound like it's exactly the same as what they had before. No. This sounds like, yeah, okay, so we have to have a diversity and inclusion officer. Fine. Let's just make sure that that the role is limited to HR. One yeah. thing that was interesting, though, to me, though, when I was I, – I don't think it's in this article, but they were talking about it, and they said that her – Focus is on um, veterans. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, it was veterans. And then there was like anybody else who was like the first year college and things like that. They was for, for, no first in their family to go to college and stuff like that. Okay. That's actually, that's actually kind of cool. So, I mean, I think they're looking at this again. I think what's going on now is we're seeing the DEI officer basically being put where they need to be put, which is like, you know, internally you can deal with people and deal with different cultures because you're dealing with a lot of different people all over the world from different backgrounds. You need somebody who can kind of, you know, work that. But when it comes to the creative side, they need to keep the DEI officers out of it because they're going to look at it and be like, it's going to be like a freaking, um, sensitivity. We don't reader, need another you know? reimagine tomorrow, which no. I think was Latondra. Yes. And that's when we had quizzes that were like ridiculous and, 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 you know, to your full privilege. Meanwhile, a lot of people that are in positions of leadership, including probably Latondra would have failed to said quizzes themselves, you know, cause, and they're like, well, anybody else is privileged. And I'm like, what? Yo, know, so hopefully that's not what we're getting here. How, how much money do you make, LaTondra? I'm yeah, sure you I know, make a right? lot of money. You're probably so, pretty privileged, um, I'm not surprised at all Disney hired new diversity officer. I'm not I expected it. I don't know why I'm maybe surprised by this. I do think you're right that the role is going to be changing to more of an HR, which is what it should be to begin with. Yeah. So it wasn't just Disney though. I mean, they, they were tossing them overboard over they the summer. They were, they were throwing them all over. And then I was like, well, maybe they're not using it anymore, but I think that, I think there's a, a actual real reason for some, in, in some cases where you might need somebody to, to oversee that. But yeah, but I think it needs to be in, in this instance, I think it needs to be relegated to human resources. I agree. But I also you know? think it needs to be handled evenly. And the yeah. problem is basically if you're white, straight or male, you know, you're the devil. And I don't think that's actually handling it evenly. Well, speak of the devil. Oh, because he's, I don't know if he's straight, but he's <laughs> he is, white and He male. is white, straight and male, yes. Oh, there you go. Yes. Uh, Pete Doctor. Pete Doctor, we'll talk about this because uh, the very end of this article, yes, he, he talks about Disney wanting to double down on uh, what allowed us to speak to audiences to begin with. And right. So Elemental did really crappy at start. And supposedly it picked up and did really, it did, it did I wouldn't say really well, but it definitely broke even. Towards the end. So then he's talking about this and he's talking about viewership because of the pandemic. He thinks Disney Plus, everybody's expecting things to go to Disney Plus. That, that's probably everybody true. Everybody wanted to know when it was available on Disney true. Plus. And that is true. And when it came to Elemental and other movies that were out, a lot of people just, in Con Mansions, another example, everybody wanted to wait till it was on Disney Plus. And so it, they did it to themselves. They're killing their own box offices, not just Pixar. Their other, like I said, Haunted Mansion and stuff were also impacted. But then they're talking down about universal storytelling and how that because Elemental did so well and resonated with so many people because it's based on Peter Son's uh, immigrant upbringing. Doctor would like to see Pixar return to telling more universal stories. He wants to make more films about ideas that we all carried around as kids, such as toys, Toy Story, Monsters, Monsters, Inc., and Superheroes, The Incredibles, all of which were developed by people that were there before him. Like Lassiter. But anyway. Yeah. So this sounds like a guy who's trying to keep his job. We want to go more to films about ideas like Pixar always was before, you know, when Lassiter was here. And he goes, I've always felt Elemental would speak to a lot of people. And I'm happy it has. But we have also taken another look at these projects we're working on now. What are the kinds of films we want to be making? I really think we want to double down on what allowed us to speak to audiences to begin with which would be ideas films. So I'm afraid next we're going to get um, identity, you know, what identity films. I'm sure we will. What are ideas about kids? Am I a boy or am I a girl? Identity films. I, you know? I can, I can almost guarantee. I mean, I'm not joking. I'm not being sarcastic. I can almost guarantee if something like that is not in the works somewhere, it's, it's going to it's be, gonna be a bunch of identity bullshit is what it is. Cause toys, toy story, monsters, monsters, Inc., superheroes, incredibles, they're broad and they're all things we dealt with. And I guarantee you, especially with the people in Pixar now, that's yeah. what we're going to get. The people, the Pixar people. 
Yeah, pretty God. much. I mean, that's what we're going to get. We're going to get, you know, more allegories about racism. We're going to get things like that because Elemental did well. So we're going to look at the stuff that did good before um, and we're going to double down on that. And if they were just doubling down on things like Toy Story, Monsters, Inc. and The Incredibles and those kind of ideas, I'd be like, that's a smart move. But I don't think that's going to stop at that. So I took I took the kids uh, to an event on the other side of Pittsburgh last night. We drove through a hipster neighborhood, and I, I actually was thinking to myself, "I'm like, my God, it looks like Pixar threw up here." Did it really? Yeah, it was just like every everything you could think, like every trope, every hipster trope, and it was just for like like a little stretch because it was mostly the area we were driving through wasn't like the best of neighborhoods, but then there was like one street with like a whole bunch of coffee shops and a vinyl shop and a, a grill spelled with an E and everybody, <laughs> everybody had a beanie on and I just remember that time hipster I told glasses. You, and, I remember the time I told you the guy came into Goodwill and was looking at records. Yeah. And what, and then what did you say? You said, what, I forget what you said. It was no, like, I said, what's he, what's he doing? I said, what's he doing? Looking at the, the albums and the vintage No, I clothes. said he came dressed in like eighties or seventies or eighties clothes. I said, yeah, he's going to look said, for the vinyl. And, I, and then I turned around and he's on on the floor spreading making a big show of spreading all the albums around now this is goodwill vinyl it's not even good vinyl okay it's goodwill vinyl and they're spreading it's he's, like crap it's he's just spreading like them all, the all out on the floor around him and making a big show of sitting on the floor and looking at all the vinyl as he's dressed in his like 70s and 80s clothes he got from goodwill which you know i have no problem with that because i think that was a big marker of vintage clothes i i wear vintage clothes sometimes i just think it's funny that he had to make this big show and that's kind of what what like that area you're describing is or some of these, you know, Pixar films and stuff are. It's just a big show of saying, look how hip and down with it I am. And I think it's going to be I'm worried it's going to turn into Pixar is going to be the the modern equivalent of Dungeons and Dragons. It already is. Coffee shops and, you know, all it that won't last stuff. Long. I mean, I think he can he can want. But I think at the end of the day. What is probably going to happen is they're going to have to produce stuff that is is going to make money. And it sounds to me like when he's like, we got to take another look at what we're doing. That sounds to me oh. like, you know, Bob Iger's like, you got to take another look. Well, at they what did take another look at Toy Story and they did Lightyear. Yeah. And then what they did with Lightyear, they made it a nothing like Buzz. They got rid of Tim Allen, which I'm sure was because they didn't like him for different reasons. Yeah. And then they, you know, made a movie. It was nothing like the character and then tried to shove agenda stuff in there and people were pissed. You had you had a property that's a perennial favorite and you I mean, a, a proper Buzz Lightyear movie would have done phenomenal. You found a way to fuck that up, too. It's so for agenda identity politics. It's so weird. If they had just done a proper Buzz Lightyear movie, it probably would have made a billion dollars. So you're just going to turn back to that kind of stuff now. No. Do we even trust them to do it? Because no. they thought that was a great idea. No, no. I think Pixar... I think Pixar is going to get, I still think they're going to get potentially folded into Walt Disney Animation Studios because it doesn't make sense to have two studios. Why do you call movies. it Disney slash Pixar now? Yeah, just call it Disney Pixar. That's what it is. That's what they're doing now. It's Pixar, it's Disney Pixar. Yeah, it's all Disney Pixar. Everything's Disney I mean, Disney there's no really reason to have a separate studio anyway. Not really. So anyway, but supposedly we're going to get more like Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. and Incredibles type sh movies. Um, oh, except all the people that worked on those movies are no longer. With that's what I'm saying. The people, yeah. the, the people that are there now, we're going to get there, we're going to get more of the same, but this, like with that kind of stuff. They're they're working with John Lasseter now at Skydance. Well, Skydance got a bunch of deals with Netflix now. Oh, hmm. you know, and Lasseter's in charge. You know that they've got a bunch of Netflix deals. They were at Apple, but now they switched to Netflix, which and, is a uh, bigger deal. Glenn Keane's doing movies with them, mm -hmm. and all these like Disney legends, the people that made. People Disney. left and are now there. They're all going there. They're all going there. Netflix and Skydance. So I think Disney's like, they're sunk, man. Anyway, are we going to wrap, wrap this up? I think we yeah. need to wrap this up. So there we go, guys. Sounds to me like uh, she's been relegated to human resources, but we but shall that's see. That's honestly what she should be at. That's what they, that's what the diversity officer yeah. should be where they should be anyway. But I'm not surprised. Are you surprised that, they, that Disney brought another chief diversity officer in? No, I think they probably have People to. People are like shocked. I'm like, I'm not surprised no, at all. No, no. Uh, but again, you know, I think they, they're changing the role to, to make sure that... It stays where it should stay. Yeah, the role is limited to HR. And that is... If you if you have concerns, you can raise the... But you have no say in production. None whatsoever. That would be my, my take. She's only been there a year anyway. They're not going to let her come in and dictate everything. So we're going to wrap it up? Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.